Wear a mask in public. Stay at least six feet apart from others and get tested. Join us and fight the spread. Visit scdhack.gov slash COVID-19. Afternoon, I'm Trey Taylor and welcome to Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Coping with COVID and In It Together presents Wellness Wednesday. And today, Dr. Tierra Roseman talks about the In It Together Facebook page. And then Lisa and John Burbage join us to discuss how and what food can do and help us to live better. That's next on Coping with COVID. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This af- good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 All right. We'll join them next on Coping with COVID. But first, your COVID community updates. A Richland One school is closed even before school opens. Burton Pack Elementary School had to shut down for deep cleaning after a teacher who was there preparing her classroom started feeling ill and later tested positive for COVID. Hand Middle School also had to close three classrooms last week because of the same reason a teacher contracted the virus. Now teachers are being given the option to work from home during virtual learning. Tomorrow, We'll talk to Richland One School Superintendent Dr. Craig Witherspoon and Assistant Superintendent James Ann Shealy. So watch, listen, and be sure to ask questions. Melania Trump is receiving high praise for her convention speech last night. The First Lady spoke from the White House Rose Garden, and interestingly enough, she was one of the only people at either convention that spoke specifically about the tragedy of the pandemic. She said her heart goes out to those who are ill, unemployed, and caring for loved ones. Today, VP Mike Pence and his wife, along with 25-year-old North Carolina newcomer Madison Cawthorn, who won his Republican seat vacated by Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, He'll speak, plus Kellyanne Conway, who earlier this week said she'll lead the White House at the end of the month to handle family business. The okra strut is canceled early in the year when we interviewed Irmo Mayor Barry Walker. He mentioned the festival will go on as scheduled, but now that city says they're hoping to do some type of scaled down event. They've now decided to cancel until 2020. The Oprah Festival was originally scheduled for September 25th and 26th. And the South Carolina State University alum helped create the new Girl Scout cookie flavor. Andre Sojourner's Toast Yay Cookie will debut in January of next year alongside other favorites like Thin Mints and my favorite, Samoas. The Toast Yay is inspired by French toast and is dipped in icing. SCD Hack has your most up-to-date listings of times, places, and locations for COVID testing in and around South Carolina. Please go to scdhack.gov and find out those, those uh, testing sites. And also, you can check the bottom of the screen, scrolling our testing sites today, tomorrow, and next week. Also at the bottom of the screen, information on if you want to have a COVID screening in your community or at your event. Also, scrolling at the bottom of the screen, information about the DHEC care line. If you need more information about COVID or if you need some transportation to get a COVID test, please contact the DHEC care line. Don't forget the free mail giveaway in the city of Columbia is continuing this week only. At From 1230 until 130, you can go to several park and recreation department locations in the city of Columbia to pick up a free meal for your students. SC Thrive is still giving out the up to $1,500 in rental assistance. Go to scthrive.com backslash COVID-19. 19 rental assistance. Again, that information is also scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And Dominion Energy, we're going to get those folks back on in uh, the next couple of weeks. Not only do they have payment plans, they have payment assistance, and they said they'll work with you. The folks at Dominion Energy said they will not call or harass you, and they will not cut off your electricity. Don't forget about MaskUpColumbiaSC.com. Go to that website, post a picture of yourself in a cool mask, get your family and friends to like it, and you could win some great prizes from the city of Columbia. It's MaskUpColumbiaSC.com. Finally, my birthday is in September but you are going to get the prizes. That's right. Beginning next week, all month long, we're going to do a great Coping with COVID giveaway. We've got your reusable Coping with COVID logoed mask. We've got 10 um, temporary masks, temporary disposable masks, courtesy of the City of Columbia and Palmetto Media Connections. We also have a great sample of Sabrini Body Butter. It feels so good on your face under your mask. Also, a gift certificate to the European Wax Center, New York High Style. We've got your Jesus Calling sample, sampler, you know, I read that at the end of the show. And uh, from J. Anthony Brown, a sample of some of his hotter than a mofo products that happens next week 
all month long in September. It's my birthday and you are getting the prizes. Now, uh, my Facebook page, my professional Facebook page is the home with Coping with COVID. Will you please go over there and like and share that page? Not only will you be able to watch Coping with COVID Monday through Saturday at 2 p.m., but you'll get all of your COVID-related updates. We're also streaming live, not only on uh, YouTube, hello to all you YouTubers, but also the In It Together Facebook page. That's right. We are streaming live on the In It Together Facebook page. And as a matter of fact, Tiffany Redman, Tiara Roseman, I don't know who Tiffany Redman is, but Tiara Roseman is here with us and she's going to talk to us. There she is right there. Dr. Tiara Roseman is here with us. Uh, it's Coping with COVID and In It Together presents Wellness Wednesday. And uh, we're going to talk about the Facebook page. It's a great resource. Dr. Roseman, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me, Trey. Absolutely. So let's throw up a, a picture of the Facebook page. Want people to go over there to the um, uh, In It Together Facebook page. Tell us about some of the resources that we'll see. Sure. So the In It Together Facebook page um, is a part of the Diabetes Advisory Council's outreach program. And with the page, there's a variety of information. So if you are just um, starting out on your wellness journey, trying to understand what prediabetes is, there's information on there. It's also information to find if you're at risk. Um, also, if you wanna know more about healthy eating and exercising so that you can keep your body weight under control and prevent diabetes, that's also on there. If, you are, um, if you're a national diabetes um, prevention program um, provider, there's information from the um, CDC about the program from time to time. We'll also have tips and guidance for um, lifestyle coaches that they can share with their participants, and then also just any other pertinent information that may come out that we think is important for people as we're all on this journey to live healthier and prevent um, diabetes in South Carolina. One yeah, other, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead, please. I was gonna say one other thing we do have is because of COVID, a lot of programs have had to switch to online only formats. And so we actually offer private groups so that if there is a National Diabetes Prevention Program provider, that wants a, a safe private place to meet with their participants and have like free streaming. We do offer that. And um, I'll have my contact information up later on, but you can let me know if you need help and, and you want to access that as well. Oh, that's great. And I was going to ask about this. So there is information on the Facebook page for, as you said, if you uh, are a healthcare provider, if you're a life coach, or if you are just someone that needs information about uh, the diabetes prevention program. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So it's kind of one stop shopping for everybody. <laughs> it is. Yes. Um, we try to have messages uh, throughout the week just for the, the various audiences so that everyone gets a little bit of information that's helpful for them. Yeah, and I was gonna ask you that, um, Tiara, how often is the Facebook page updated with new information? So typically we have between three and four posts a week. So I try to do them every other day. Um, and it, it just depends on um, what, what comes out and when. So for example, the CDC who sponsors the National Diabetes Prevention Program, um, they may have information coming out. And so then you'll see more updates as they post, but um, typically three to four posts a week. Okay. All right. Great. That is great. So that is the um, In It Together Facebook page. Now you also mentioned something about the groups yes. uh, that people can really kind of host their own meetings, so to speak. Tell us about that. Sure. So as a part of the National Diabetes Prevention Program, there are meetings um, first six months every week. But then after that, it's a monthly meeting for the last six months of the program. And what we're offering is a place where you can post information, communicate with your participants, all on Facebook. It's all free. But then also, if you need to switch to online only, there, um, there's an option there for you to um, do the live sessions or um, webinars for your meetings as well. That's great. So people can actually come together kind of like a Zoom meeting? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've heard, I heard, I know that Facebook is doing that, offering that option for a lot of the pages. So I think that's amazing because like you said, because due to COVID, people are not, you know, able to connect one-on-one. -on -one. So right there on the In It Together Facebook page, you know, they can utilize that, you know, to to uh, to meet with, uh, with um, their other members. Yes, and then it's easy for them. So as long as someone contacts me, I set it all up for them. So okay. just like you're a part of a group that, you know, it'd be like knitting or 
crocheting, things like that. You have those Facebook groups online already. So it's, it's very similar to that, but it's just all housed on the In It Together Facebook page. So no work yeah. on the um, lifestyle coaches part. Yeah. Here's the other thing. And that's great because everybody's not technologically <laughs> inclined. You know, the people are not educated in that. And it gets very uh, intimidating, I think, to people. But again, like you said, they don't, all they have to do is say to you, hey, I want to do this. And then you'll just set it up. Exactly. And I'm also there for technical support as, as um, they're going through and working through the program and learning the platform. So that it's a really unique opportunity to where I'm also providing that technical assistance. Right. We're talking to uh, Dr. Um, Tierra Roseman with the In It Together Facebook page or here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor and uh, it's Wellness Wednesday and Coping with COVID and In It Together present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday right here on the show. And uh, Tierra was just kind of taking us through the Facebook page with all of the great information. Now, I see, Tierra, there's information, as you say, about healthy eating, about the meetings, uh, statistics and things of that sort. Tell us about what we can expect to see today or this week. Sure, so this week we have some more information about um, what is pre-diabetes, but then also building an exercise regimen. So I'll, I'll okay. post some great information from the American Diabetes Association about exercise and exercise in a way that's easy because not everyone is able to get out and run a 5k, but um, some people might have mobility issues yeah. um, or other challenges. So you'll see some information around that, but then also some more information about prediabetes and understanding your risk. For the disease. Right. That's good. So you said just easy, quick stuff. Can you give us a couple of tips that you're going to share this week? Um, one thing is um, start, start small, build, you know, build goals as you go along, but don't feel like you have to, go out and do some grand exercise plan. If you're in a chair, find ways to stretch. Um, yeah. There's oftentimes a lot of clutter or junk around us. Use those <laughs> as weights, things like that. If you're actually- Oh, that's good. Um, definitely for me, it's coffee. I usually have a 24 ounce coffee mug. So that's the nice <laughs> way to start. But, um, but also thinking about what's around in your household. Because interestingly enough, because of the pandemic, a lot of people are working out from home. So finding weights and other equipment is difficult. But you have like gallons of milk, gallons of water, um, cans, things like that are all options where you can lift weights, but just finding ways to be active even when you're at home. Yeah, that's good. I want to bring in uh, John and Lisa Burbage. Uh, they join us and they are also uh, a part of uh, the DPP program. Lisa is actually a master trainer for the uh, Diabetes Prevention Program. And through her company, Wellness 5, she coaches people throughout the state to become lifestyle coaches just to help people make better choices for their health and lives. She's joined by her husband, John, who's a lifelong journalist turned farmer. We're going to see some of his uh, planning in just a minute. He works with organizations like Grow Food SC and Feeding America to provide fresh fruits and vegetables to food deserts and anyone who needs and wants them. I wanted to bring you guys into the conversation because Tierra was kind of talking about some of the information that could be found on the Facebook page. And Lisa, I know this is kind of what you do. You are a lifestyle coach. What does that mean? You guys are on mute. Can you take yourself off mute? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, what that means is um, I help people create healthy lifestyle habits. And to Tierra's point, it's not about making radical changes. Um, it's about making sustainable changes. Right. Sustainable change is small. You start small, you build momentum, and then you keep going. So everything we learn in the diabetes prevention program are things that you can do at home, um, that you don't have to have a gym membership or any special equipment. Um, you just incorporate the changes into your everyday life. Mm -hmm. Are you finding, though, um, Lisa, that people are having any particular challenges making these changes? Because here's the thing. I think in our minds we know, yes, mm -hmm. I need to make a change. Right. But then getting that body <laughs> and, and our willpower to do it is something totally different. Yes. Um, a lot of people almost psych themselves out before they get started. Um, I'll give you an example I used on a presentation I was doing this morning. Somebody wanted to lose 25 pounds in six months. Mm. That right there would shut me down. <laughs> overwhelming. 
Yeah. So we talked about, you know, setting small goals. The first goal might be getting a pair of walking shoes because she wants to walk as part of her weight loss journey. Yeah. Um, so don't focus on the number or what you're trying to do, but focus more on one tiny, almost laughable tiny step mm -hmm. that propels you forward. You build momentum that way. And as you build momentum, you build your self-efficacy, your ability to be confident in your ability to do this. Um, most people want to do it perfect and we're not, we're not built to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So then they fall off the wagon. They're like, well, guess I can't do this because, you know, once again, I failed. So if you minuscule it down, and incorporate it into what you're already doing, you're going to have much more success. Yeah, I love that you're saying, you kind of saying, give yourself a break, give yourself some grace. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's not going to take, it didn't take you 10 minutes to get here and it's going to, not going to take you 10 minutes to turn it around either, right? Yeah, exactly. Don't focus on that big number, that 25 pounds or whatever right. it is. Focus on what you can do every single day to move you closer to that goal. That's what I teach my students. And we talk about in my programs, how to do that, not focusing on a big number that, like I said, is mentally um, demoralizing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think people should also write down? I, I know for me, it helps me to write down things, even as journaling, because I can go back and see some of the things that I wanted to do or the goals that I make and realize, oh my gosh, I've done this. I think yeah. when you're in the midst of it, it's hard to see your progress. But is that something you would suggest too? Yes. I oftentimes suggest gratitude journals, which is basically what you're talking about. Um, you, you write down what you excel at today. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do it at the end of the day. What are three things I did well today? That's good. And then tomorrow you do it again. And then the next day you do it again. It really helps to keep things in the proper space perspective because we do tend to focus on the negative. We're wired that way. Yeah. We work extra hard to focus on the positive. And a gratitude journal is a great way of doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. So um and I'm John, we're gonna get you in here in just a minute. But uh Tierra, I know that part of your work and getting your PhD was really talk to kind of figure out the mind, body, and soul of why we eat the way we eat. So why do we eat the way we eat? <laughs> well, there are several factors. I think as why really, am I like this? <laughs> you know, there's definitely a, a combination of things um, from genetics, but then even how you were raised. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of my work looking at parent-child relationships and how the home environment caters healthy or unhealthy eating habits. Mm -hmm. But I think ultimately we have to recognize that we have a relationship with food and it can be healthy yeah. or unhealthy. Yeah. And food should not, it can be, it can, it can feel pleasurable definitely, but we shouldn't yeah. use it as a source of pleasure. Um, so things like rewarding yourself with food may not be ideal because it, it it, it creates an unhealthy relationship um, with food. But I also think that it's important, as Lisa said, give yourself grace, start small. Um, think about what you're eating, how you're eating. Are you eating in front of a television? Because you're more likely to eat a lot of food if you're in front of the TV because you're not, you're not thinking it. about it. Right. Yeah. It's you're just doing really that. Easy. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then the whole bowl of whatever is gone. Um, also portion sizes and uh, begin when you buy food, set, um, either do like small baggies or section out foods so that you have smaller portions so that when you go to grab that snack or the food item, it's already in a smaller container. So you're not having to, in the moment, think about it. So just little things like that, really um, just slow lifestyle, lifestyle changes are necessary so that you create an environment where eating healthy, but then also your approach to eating is a lot healthier too. Well, you talked about the parent-child relationship. And of course, mm -hmm. we're going to eat what our parents feed us. And, and we are such, we're mimickers, you know, children mm -hmm. are mimickers. If you see, if they see you do something or hear you say something, you know, I, 
I, you turn around and you think, where'd you get that from? Well, I got it from you. <laughs> you know, so, so how do we teach our children if we are already not eating right? For those folks who mm-hmm. are struggling or, or having challenges, changing their lifestyle, how do you then, uh, if you have, you know, family or children around you, how do you help them to change while you're changing also? I would say number one, remember that they're people and they have habits that they've already built in. So gotcha. just like That's it takes good. a long time for you to get used to new foods, kids, it takes them a long time too. And kids are very vocal about what they like and don't like. Yeah. Um, and we're naturally wired to like things that are sweet and salty. So I would say number one, just exposure, have them taste test it over and over again. Uh-huh. So they, they learn to like it. But then also um, when I teach nutrition, I always say incorporate healthy foods in what you're eating. So adding fruits and vegetables to items you normally prepare. So for example, there's like, instead of just regular mashed potatoes, adding in cauliflower. Or if you're doing a pasta dish, add in some fresh broccoli. So they're yeah. slowly learning to like, okay, healthy foods are okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing is involve them in the process. Kids like to help. And yeah. they also have this sense of pride and they'll test out what they help to make. Exactly. And so that's another way too. Yeah, that's good. I want to get, but I'm, I'm, I want to get back with you on that sweet and salty thing. Why we are hardwired for that. But before we get to that, I want to ask you, um, Lisa. You know, t- uh, Tierra talked a little bit about not rewarding yourself with food, and that's one of the things I was going to ask you. If you've gone all week and you've eaten all your your vegetables and your fruits and everything, is it? Are you taking a step backwards if you reward yourself with a chocolate chip cookie? No, 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 no. I, I tell my students to eat that. I'm probably a little different than um, <laughs> folks because if it's deprivational, it's or puni- if it's punitive, you're not going to sustain it. And, right. I, you know, I really, really focus on the sustainability. We can all lose weight and then gain it back. That yeah. doesn't help a whole lot. But if you want a chocolate chip cookie, give yourself a chocolate chip cookie. Um, in a in a program I did last year, I had a woman who lost a hundred pounds. Wow! And she loved red velvet cake. That was <laughs> her, I mean, that was her go to. Right. And to Tierra's point, she would get a cake. A lot of times, you know, bring it home from church, whatever. She mm-hmm. put it into slices, and she put it in baggies took it out to her freezer, which was in the garage. Mm. And so she had to work to get it. She, she had, to work had to work to get it. And so in that moment, she would That's think, well, how bad do I want it? Right. You know, maybe I don't want it that bad. Um, and some days, no, I really want it. So portion control, like Tierra said, is so important. But deprivation does not get us anywhere but wanting more. If somebody mm-hmm. told me I can never have it again, I'm going to want 10 pieces of it. Yeah. 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 But, but, you know, I find that sugar is so addictive. Mm-hmm. I tell you, you know, every um, during Lent, I'll give up potatoes because I love potatoes, baked potato, mashed potatoes, potato chips, potato tots. I love a potato. <laughs> so I'll get I'll give up sweets and potatoes. And when, you know, during that 40 days of Lent, it, I mean, you know, almost takes you 40 days to get it out of your system. But then when it's out, I don't have a taste for it anymore, you know? So so it's very addictive though. Sugar and salt is, is very addictive. So how do you change your palate? Well, your palate will change on its own. Um, but to your point, um, Trey, sugar and flour are some of the most addictive things that we can eat. There's a reason they're white, <laughs> like cocaine. <laughs> they're every bit as addictive, uh, seriously. And so um, you- I could go someplace else with that, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to stop it. Uh. I digress and you keep going. Go ahead, Lisa. No, 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 we're all going to hey. Um, not that any of us know about cocaine, but <laughs> moving forward, but it is an ad- sugar is very addictive. That's that's the point. And yeah. flour, um, we're usually hardwired towards one or the other. Right. And so, if you know that sugar is your kind of your weakness or what your go to is, then I would just slowly transition out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, going cold turkey is not really going. It, it's you're going to feel bad. 
you're not, you're going to be very tired. You're not going to have any energy. So I would just wean myself off of it. And then as you're weaning yourself off of it, and I've had students tell me this, they don't want it anymore. Their taste buds have changed. They just, and then, um, you know, I personally have some things that I've taken out of my diet. I didn't do it overnight. And now people ask me, do you want it? I'm like, no, I really don't. Yeah. 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 Hey, John, uh, can you add, I say you, can we add like veggies to something to make it better? Like, for instance, could we add veggies to the chocolate chip cookie mix and that would make it better? <laughs> Well, you know, you could uh, add whatever you wanted to to the mix. Uh, you know, people are doing that with um, yeah. smoothies. They're doing it with smoothies. Yeah. Yeah. So, and smoothies are a very good, healthy drink. Right. You can put your fresh veggies right in there and and get them in, uh, get them quickly. All yeah. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. You make a very good point there. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I just wondered about that because I did uh, speak with someone, another life coach who said, if you just start putting a little bit of veggies, if if you just use some live herbs, you know, uh, some basil or some oregano, some live bagel or raisin and, and just sprinkle it over your food, you're at least introducing that into your diet. Hmm. Exactly. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've been a journalist for a long time and uh, I've uh, also a book publisher and, and, and we've published 90 books so far on a lot of subjects, but I'm also a farmer and I we were fortunate enough to have a home here in Charleston, but we also have a farm in Hampton, South Carolina, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, which is about an hour and a half ride away, about 80 miles. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with the COVID, uh, problem that we've had. I've, and with my age, uh, I'm over 50 <laughs> by a good bit. <laughs> found that, um, you know, going to the farm and sheltering there has been a good thing. And, yeah. um, and, uh, being at the farm, I'm there with my, my vegetables. We, we have 120 acres, but I'm, uh, I'm planting, uh, fresh vegetables, uh, on about three acres which is a, a lot of property for fresh vegetables. Yeah. And, um, and I usually do most of my planting in the spring. I think you can see some of my kale. There. Yes. Yes. I see <laughs> that. And is that the purple stuff at the, and, and like, right. Is that kale? Was that the purple stuff? It looks kind of dark. What is that? Um, can you it's see it? Hard for me to pick it up, but you know, okay. I grow eggplant. I grow kale. Probably eggplant. Um, eggplant. But uh, a lot of the kale has a. Uh, there's some onions, fresh onions. A lot of the kale has a purple tint to it. it it's, that's that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, also with uh, various cabbages, you know, and um, also with uh, collards, you know. Uh, some of them are very green. Some of them are, you know, a little darker, almost purple. Right. People enjoy um, the purple collards. Uh, they know um, they know about them because they grew up with them. We grew up in the South here, and uh, collards has been a staple. Yeah. But uh, that's a great spring crop. Uh, everything uh, kind of falls off in the summer with the heat, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then you can plant for the fall starting in about two weeks from May. <clears throat> well, you know, I'm- yeah. I noticed a lot of people are this during COVID, a lot of people started, you know, their garden. So I'm glad you brought up gardening because I was going to kind of talk about that. How easy is it? And, and Tierra, I hadn't forgotten about your question about why we're hardwired for salt and sweet. Cause I got to get back to that. Cause I want to know what that is, but uh, people are really starting to get more into gardening. You know, people are doing container gardening and, you know, actually having some plots out in their house. How easy is it to start a garden and what would you start with? Well, it's pretty easy to start one, but uh, if you're going to start it right, it's going to take a little planning. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing you want to make sure you have is, is good dirt. Okay. The best best farmer Mm -hmm. concentrate on the earth first. You want it to be, um, you want it to be suitable to grow things. You want it to be, um, have enough air in it. You want the dirt to be loose. You want it to have uh, materials in it to absorb water, like mm-hmm. old 
grasses and things that have been turned under. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you get some, you know, good, healthy dirt. Okay. And um, then the next thing you want to do, if you're doing it in your yard, you know, find a spot, uh, get a hoe, do it the with the Armstrong method. Mm -hmm. Armstrong method being by hand. <laughs> you, oh, using your arm, your strong right. arm. Or, uh, you know, get a tiller. You know, they have some, uh, they have nice tillers on the market and, and till yourself a spot and get that, that ground good and loose and uh, ready to be planted. Well, let me ask you something, John. You said get good dirt. Do you go to the, I mean, where do you, you do you not have good dirt in outside? I mean, well, all, I guess all dirt is not created equal. All yeah. dirt is not created equal, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, you know, some some dirt is uh, is more has more sand in it. Than okay. Others, some dirt has more clay in it. Um, dirt is usually considered a loam. They call it a loam. So you have a clay loam or a sandy loam or okay. a rich loam, which is a combination of both. You would you want to get your dirt tested? You can get it done easily at Clemson University. Okay. You can put in a sample, and uh, they'll send yeah. it off and. And uh, and you'll get in a couple of weeks, you'll get information on what it is and what needs to be added to it mm -hmm. so that you can grow your fresh vegetables. So I would recommend strongly that you get your dirt sample. OK, if you're using it, what's in your yard? Uh, I have on my our big porch that we have at the farm, I have large containers on the porch mm -hmm. in which I grow my tomatoes. Is that and so, uh those, those are, are some herbs. Those, those are your herbs. herbs. Okay. Those are smaller pots, but we have, you know, I have uh, six or eight, you know, 10 gallon uh, uh, containers in which I put miracle Grow dirt in there that I buy from the hardware store. It's not that expensive. I mean, you can get 50 pounds for $7. Mm -hmm. That is ready to go. And it also, it contains a lot of it contains uh, some, materials in there that'll that'll hold the water and keep the dirt from getting dried out too quickly okay um, uh we have a comment tanya rodriguez hodges says uh by the time her family realized that she switched to whole grain flowers coconut monk fruit sugars etc they were converts so, Yay. yeah so she sounds like she switched they didn't know what she was seeing because she's doing the cooking so you know you can control what people um, take in. That's good, Tanya. Thank you so much for joining us. We're talking to uh, Tara Roseman. Uh, she's with uh, DHEC. She's uh, over the Facebook page, but she also is a, a, a lifestyle training coach herself. And also uh, John is a, a former journalist, now farmer, and uh, her, her his wife, Lisa, is a, a lifestyle coach also. We're talking to them uh, about uh, the diabetes prevention program. We're talking about farming, cooking, shopping, what you need to do, how you can do it, and the choices you can make, simple choices that you can make for you and your family today so that you can live a better tomorrow. We're going to come right back with uh, John and Lisa and Tierra in just a minute. Talk to John a little bit more about farming and planting and then talk to Lisa and Tierra about some practical things you can do so that you and your family can live and eat so you can have a better life. That's next on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com and Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at CA 
chcares at chasc dot org. Coping with COVID brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connection. Coping, coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Hey there, you are watching Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Hey, don't forget that in September, which is next month, we're going to do our our birthday giveaway. I'll tell you more about that at the end of the show. Want you to continue to like and share, post this information out so we can get the message to the masses. We are actually broadcasting live streaming to the In It Together page. Also, my pages on Facebook and Instagram, and of course, on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Coping with COVID and In It Together present well this Wednesday. Today, we're talking to uh, John and Lisa Burbage and also uh, Tierra Roseman. And when we left, we were talking to John about planting. Now, uh, John, you said all dirt is not created equal. Make sure you got good dirt out there. And uh, and then what was uh, the next thing? Get a hoe, you said. You get you get some uh, garden but garden tools. Right. Uh, you need to, um, once, you, uh, once you've had your dirt tested through Clemson, and it's a very simple process, you just take it to your agent, take a sample, and they'll send it back, and they'll tell you what it needs. But uh, more importantly, you want to um, find a good space that's sunny, and, um, and you want to make sure you um, have uh, just a few tools uh, to help you, uh, a rake or, or uh, a shovel and a, and a hoe. And uh, but I, I don't recommend that you go out and buy a lot of uh, a lot of chemicals to put on it because you don't know what you're going to need when you start. So just hold off on that. Build yourself, uh, you know, a, a uh, you can take a some lumber and build yourself a raised bed if you want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then just add dirt that you get from uh, from the store. Good, healthy dirt. Put it in there. <laughs> And uh, and then you need a watering system. You can do that uh, with a watering can, or if you want to, you can set up fairly easily uh, a drip system, right. uh, depending on what the size of your plot. Now, I'm glad you said uh, that. You know, you can kind of do it kind of how you want. Now, we have I have a watering system, and and out in my backyard, um, my girlfriend and I we have a, a garden out there. But this year, when we started planting because I'm not, listen, I, I, we had a beautiful watering system the first year. Now we're just watering with a bottle. You know, we're just doing that. And that's okay too, right, John? Right. You know, because people want some low maintenance stuff, I think. Right. And I mean, because then you even mentioned, you know, the raised garden and we've got all of that. Mm-hmm. But can you just, what What can you plant? I see a lot of people doing, um, what is it called? The gardens in a pot. What is that called? Mm-hmm. Pop, well, I, mean, I can't remember what you call it. Container, 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 container garden. Thank container you, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, we do the, we do some container gardening on our porch with uh, yeah. ten gallon uh, containers that we got from uh, you Lose. know from Lowe's. Yeah, yeah. And um, mm-hmm. you know the watering system. Uh, you know the the best way to ha- handle your watering is to just make sure it stays damp. Okay. You don't want to overwater it. Right, you know, right. You don't want it to get so dry that it starts to. <laughs> to die. So, now, yeah. if, if you have some seeds from like, mm-hmm. if you ate a cantaloupe or watermelon, mm-hmm. can you use those seeds to plant? You can, awesome. but you run a bit of a risk. You, you don't know where they came from and you don't oh. know uh, just how good the seeds are. I gotcha. Uh, I buy mine uh, online through a company called Johnny's Seeds. Okay. There, there are three or four companies like that in the, in the nation. And they're very efficient and they, they raise their own seeds and they're all oh, wow. wow. And they don't cost very much, but you can uh, go, you can order a catalog or you can look at it online and you can pick out what you want to grow and mm-hmm. order the seeds through them and they will ship them to you. Okay. That's the safest way to do it. Now really? I've grown vegetables from uh, like cantaloupes, for instance, from the seeds that I had, you know, in the cantaloupe to start with, mm-hmm. but uh, those you can't really count on. You don't know whether they're going to germinate or not. So okay. the best thing to do is go through a reputable company. Okay. Now, do you say seeds versus the plants? Because you can get the little plants, you know, for mm-hmm. them to grow, which um, is better. 
Well, uh, you know, planting from seeds is, is a little more difficult than using sets. Mm-hmm. That, that's for the little plants. Um, in Hampton, where my farm is, I, we have a, a seed and feed store there that I order my uh, sets and uh, through them and I get them. They're not very expensive. I can get 50 of them for $5 or something. Okay. But, oh, um, oh, that's good. So mm-hmm. I, may, I choose which ones I want to set and which ones I want to plant by seed. Some mm-hmm. are more some are easier to do them by sets you know they're ready to go once you put them in the ground well you know what one thing i'll tell you that i found uh, the first year i planted and we did uh this this summer we did tomatoes cucumbers we did cantaloupe but our cantaloupe didn't do well and mm-hmm. we did a whole bed of okra because my girlfriend loves mm-hmm. okra yeah. oh there's there's a picture of some of my um yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Oh, thank yeah. you thank you it's okay <laughs> All those are plants in the house and everything. So, um, but what I found, and this sounds crazy, but the the food, the vegetables tasted so much, and this sounds crazy, but fresher because they are fresh, Trey. But they just taste, you just won't believe the taste of something out of your garden as opposed to something in the grocery store. You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, I can remember when I was young, when I was a boy, we, um, we, would, uh, we lived in Charleston. I grew up in Charleston and we would go to the beach uh, during the summertime and we would stop on the way at the vegetable stands on the way to Folly Beach. Mm-hmm. And we would buy our fresh field peas. We would buy collards. We would buy onions, beans, everything mm-hmm. for the week, you know, right there fresh yeah then, uh, that was at a time when there was a lot of fresh farming going on in in, in the area today it's it, it's coming back but for you know 15 20 almost 30 years truck farming is what you call vegetable farming right uh, faded and grain farming took over and that would be corn and soybeans and wheat and those kinds of products that are uh, uh, gathered and put in silos and sold overseas and in this country mm-hmm. because there's a, you know, there's people are starving across the world and this is yeah. the best way to get food, food to them. Yeah. Now, uh, COVID has added to it, but prior to COVID, uh, a lot of farm to market programs returned because people were going back to their right. yes. growing yeah. fed vegetables. So a lot of people have grown up not, really knowing in this part of the country, not really knowing what fresh vegetables were all about. If you didn't have a garden, you were getting uh, vegetables from a grocery store and yeah. a lot of it was grown in Mexico. You know, wow. Or off somewhere. Yeah. You know what else I noticed was my, it's particularly the lettuce and the spinach that I grew. It lasted so much longer. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, those plants uh, do last a long time if you if they're picked fresh mm-hmm. and if they're uh, stored properly, cooled properly. Mm-hmm. Each plant has a different, you know, requirements. But yeah, you know, mm-hmm. what we used to eat that came from uh, South America, you know, has been around for a long time. By the time mm-hmm. it gets to your store, right? And you just it's don't think about good. that. It's yeah, good. it's fine. You're used to it. But then once you get it fresh, then you know mm-hmm. that you're getting much, much more, and you are, vitamin wise and, and yeah. health wise, fresher the better. Yeah. And, uh, that's why I always uh, say, you know, look at the color of your of your vegetables, make sure they're good and rich color. Mm-hmm. That's a good sign that they're fresh, they're not faded. And today it's very available in South Carolina because so many people are doing like what I've been doing, and that is going back to the land growing vegetables, growing enough to share, mm-hmm. growing enough to sell. Mm-hmm. And uh, all, I just try to make enough money to pay for my fertilizer and my tractors. And, <laughs> yeah. and but I enjoy it, you know. Yeah. To get out and get that vitamin D. In the oh, absolutely. And like Tierra said about g- getting kids involved, you know, once you get them involved in the uh, growing and the planting and the gardening, they they're they got you got that buy in from them. They they love it, too. Just they see. Too. Yeah, they love it, too. We're talking to uh, John Burbage. He is a journalist turned expert farmer. He's given us some great information about farming. His uh, wife, Lisa, is a life coach and uh, Tierra Roseman also is uh, with us uh, from DHEC. And I want to get you 
you guys back in here because I really want to talk about, um, um, uh, you know, what people need to do to kind of turn it around. Tell me, because people are going to say, you hear people say, it costs too much to eat healthy. It, it costs, mm-hmm. it's, it's easier. It's more accessible, one, junk food, and two, it's, it lasts longer. So what are some good cost saving, economical, practical things that, that people can do, either Lisa or Tierra? So what I always tell people is um, definitely with the fresh fruits and vegetables, ideally you would want them farm fresh as um, John has said, but then um, frozen veggies are fine too. Um, a lot of times they're picked at the peak freshness and flash and flash frozen. So I feel, I think that it's a really alter, a cheap alternative, but then also you can integrate it into so many dishes. You, for me, I always keep bags of fresh, um, frozen veggies handy. So I just throw them in something while I'm cooking. Yeah. Um, but also look at farmer's markets, places where um, you can get low cost fresh produce as well. And here in Columbia, we have the, the larger farmer's market market, but then also Soda City and other um, yeah. alternatives too. Um, and then the SNAP program actually incentivizes getting fresh fruits and vegetables. You can get extra money um, to, for those purchases. At, oh, at really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, it's called Healthy Bucks. Know. Okay, yeah. so if someone is on SNAP, what do they have to do to get those healthy bucks, as you say? I would call talk to the to DSS um, okay. about that, but yes, that is available in the state. Yeah, that's good to know, you know, because if someone, you know, is, you know, having some financial challenges and they are on the SNAP program to know that they can get additional funds so that they can, you know, purchase food from the farmer's market is good to know. Thank you, Tierra. And Lisa? Well, um, I was going to say beans. Um, Beans are some of the cheapest things out there. You can get a can of beans for a dollar oftentimes. Mm -hmm. And beans, um, I don't buy the low sodium. Don't pay the extra money for that. Rinse, just get them, rinse them in a colander. Okay. Get the sodium off yourself. And beans are a superstar food, no doubt about it. Um, Especially if you're trying to move away from meat and eat less meat. Mm -hmm. Beans are a good um, source of fiber and protein. Yeah, you made a great point to make sure you wash them off because they are Mm -hmm. typically packed in salt, which is another, you know, thing that's really not good for sugar, salt and flour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, I've got a, I have a contract with a com- uh, with an organization called Grow Food Carolina, mm-hmm. and um, it was started by the Coastal Conservation League about four or five years ago, and uh, they contract with small farmers such as myself. Uh, each year, I will uh, contract with them for a certain amount of um, fresh vegetables, and uh, I specialize in, in winter squash. These are your hard hard squashes. They don't necessarily winter doesn't necessarily mean much because they're growing <laughs> in the spring and right. in the fall. But uh, I'm talking about, you know, butternut squash and, and, and a lot of others that many of us hadn't heard of yet, but these Japanese squashes and Japanese mm. birds too. And uh, so I fill those contracts and they buy, you know, it's a guaranteed sale for me, which is great. And then they have been up until COVID selling the majority of these fresh vegetables from hundred there's a hundred farmers involved in this wow. all over the state they sell them primarily to restaurants you know charleston has a huge restaurant reputation and a lot of fine restaurants so and columbia has excellent ones and greenville does too and of course all the smaller towns have you know some homegrown foods but mm-hmm. um it's important that uh that to know that with covid uh, Grow Food Carolina has taken up a collection, basically, among member membership. They, they have about $200,000 that they put into a fund for buying, for buying the fresh vegetables from people like me and giving them to um, uh, people who need food. Yeah, yeah. Fresh food. It's a wonderful program. It, mm-hmm. The Grow Food Carolina is a nonprofit and that's why we can do these kinds of things. So, you know, you've got food banks, you've got uh, you've got homeless shelters, you've, you've got a, a DSM, right. a lot of contacts for this. So, fresh vegetables are available, just yeah, like that in D-Hack. now and this day. D-Hack. Yeah, and do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, John, how can people get access to those? You know, to those yeah. fresh vegetables. I know you said you partnered with Grow Food. Grow Food Carolina. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. you know, if, if I heard about this and I was curious, I would, uh, I would call my local, um, DSS or okay. even, uh, your, um, you know, your city, city hall and okay. just say, are there any food banks available in my, in my area? And they will give you a list of them and there yeah. are a few. Okay. Um, so you want to take a look at those, go, you know, go over, take a look, see if they have what you like. Okay. Uh, a lot of it's free. A lot of it is practically free. Right. And the idea is to provide fresh food to what we call food deserts places where you can't get it. You know? Yeah. And there are a lot of places there in South Carolina where people oh, just, they, they just don't have access. They don't have a grocery store nearby, you know, things of that sort. So right. uh, we'll let Wooten, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We'll let, she says, thank you so much for today's show. She said she needed this information. Well, we'll let, thank you so much for watching. Please continue to post and share so we can get this message to the masses because we are sharing some great information, not only about as John said about farming, about getting the resources that you need. Uh, Tara just said something great about, you know, getting some additional money if you do uh, have SNAP benefits for getting fresh fruits and vegetables. I also want to know um, what's in season right now, John, if people want okay. to plant or eat. Okay. Or, yeah, because everything's not in season you know, all the time. You need to think in terms of uh, two seasons. You have a your spring season and you have your fall season. You, you do your spring planting in February, you start in February, and then by the time you know, uh, spring comes, you've got lots of uh, majority of the vegetables that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, you know, onions and beans and mm -hmm. squashes and cucumbers and, you know, uh, those things. You plant a little bit later mm -hmm. with your nightshades. That would be your tomatoes and, and your, um, your eggplants. Egg okay. um, and you, those are more of a summer crop. So you plant those a little bit later, later, say in March. And then by this time of the year, summer, when it's very hot, there's not most of the fresh vegetables that you you had for spring are gone, but your tomatoes and your eggplants and there are others, your okra, those are all fine right now. They're fresh now. Mm -hmm. when you go to the market or when you uh, go to anywhere that you get your food, you know, you should see plenty of that and it should be available and good. Yeah. Corn is the same way. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a summer crop. Your, um, you know, your, the corn that you eat, your sweet corns. Right. I would, be, uh, I would be very careful about the corns that you get. Now they have genetically modified corns that are very tasty out now. They're, uh, the, the jury's out on whether they're actually going to be good for you in the long run or not. Wow. A lot of scientists say that they're fine, but we haven't really <laughs> as a country, uh, decided yet on that one, but, uh, the other fresh corns are available now. Um, and I also want to say when you buy, when you're buying fresh vegetables, um, if you want ones that are organically grown, you need to understand that you, the farmer has not put any chemicals on those plants to keep the bugs away. Now this time of year, the bugs are very bad. They have, uh, there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens is a lot of these bugs will come through a hole in the tomato, take out the, t some of the, the juice. And then the tomato is beautiful still when it's ready, but it has a little black spot on it. You know, you can see where it's been damaged. There's nothing wrong with that tomato. It's okay. a organically grown tomato. It's probably more healthy than that perfect tomato mm -hmm. you see in the grocery store. Okay. Because it has not been, you know, uh, Chemical. chemically treated. Right. right. With, um, you know, a lot of other plants like your corns. You know, I use, if I'm going to buy fresh, sweet corn, I'll look at the top and, and it, you know, if there's some worm damage in the top, that's okay. As long as those kernels are have a good, milky, clean uh, juice, then you can just snip the top off and it's good to go. Yeah. That's another sign that someone has not put, you know, poisons all over their plants. Which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. This is a good thing. Yeah. This so so yeah. you do recommend buying organic? I do. And, okay. uh, you know, I, I do organic growing, but I, I'm, I do use one chemical that, and that is in the fertilizer. Nitrogen, you cannot get a natural nitrogen. So 
you know, when you see your fertilizers, you see three numbers on them, usually five, 10, 10 or whatever. The, the first one is your nitrogen and then there's potassium and then there's um, one other, can't remember off the top of my head. But your nitrogens are usually uh, chemically created and put into the fertilizer, into the ground. So I do use, uh, you know, your standard fertilizers. Right. Right. And, and I don't think there's a problem with it, but some hey, people use compost. Oh, that's all. That right. Is. Yeah. And I want to get to compost in a minute where, um, but Willette has another question for you, John. She says she has an acre of land that she'd like to use to plant for feeding others. Right. She says, what can she do right now? Or is she too late in the season for planting something new? No, she can right now. She can, uh, you know, if she has an acre, that's a lot. She's going to need a tractor more than likely, or somebody who can come over and plow that ground for her. Um, trying to do an acre on your own without any equipment is a big, big job. Yeah. It's a very difficult job. So I would get that ground turned up, turned over now, get it turned over now. And then I would have them uh, after a couple of weeks, I would have the tractor person, or if she's got one, go ahead and cut it back in again, smooth it out. You, your ground should be good and friable, they call it. That means it has a lot of oxygen in it, a lot of air in it. And then you make your rows and plant. I would not try to plant the whole acre. It's that's okay. huge. It's a big undertaking. Yeah. I would try a little bit, maybe two 30 foot rows. To start. Of what? Of what, uh, John? Well, for the, you'd be planting for the fall. Fall, um, yeah. You can plant your root crops, your beets, your, your um, carrots, your onions. Uh, it's too late for the tomatoes and the, and the nightshades. It's too late for your corn because by the time it would be ready, it would be too cold. It right. Would, so would, carrots. Yeah, your root crops. And, okay. and also your collards. Right. And, okay, uh, collards. And lettuces and, um, and, you know, your greens. Okay. You're looking for something that um, is only going to take, you know, at the most uh, 60 days to produce. Go hey. online and call, go online to um, Clemson and find out what you can plant for the fall. They'll have a whole list of it and they mm -hmm. on there, it will tell you spacing, fertilizing, everything you need to know. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I was going to just ask you to give your information. Can you give your information, John? So she can, uh, do you have, that she can contact you if she's not able to get in touch with Clemson and maybe you can connect her? Certainly, she can. Uh, my email address, if she likes to uh, would want to get in touch with me, is J Burbage, B U R B A G E, at postandcourier.com. That's the newspaper. Okay. P O S T A N D C O U R I E R.com. I'd be glad to help her. All right. Thank you. So, John and Lisa, if people want more information from you about how to about not only being a life coach, because I know you train life coaches, but if people want a life coach, they just need somebody to help them jumpstart their health and wellness. How can they reach you? Um, well, diabetes prevention programs are starting all the time and I'm going to be starting some new ones this fall. So and they're going to be virtual. So if somebody lives in Bluffton or if they live in Greenwood, they can participate. Great. All they need to do is just reach out to me, um, Lisa at wellness five F I V E dot com. And I'll put them on the list. All right. Lisa at wellness five F I V E dot com. And uh, Lisa will be glad to contact you. And uh, Dr. Rosemont, <laughs> if people want more information, about from you about either the Facebook page or if they are a life coach and uh, they want to put together a group for the In It Together Facebook page, how can they contact you? Sure. If you just go to In It Together SC on Facebook, um, there is an option to contact me and you can do that there. All right. You can hit her up on the In It Together website or and or Facebook page on uh, Facebook. That's where Facebook pages are, everybody, on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, you can contact, <laughs> just in case you didn't know, you, know, you can contact uh, Tiara. And then, of course, you can see um, the information for Lisa. You know what? Listen, it's good to reach out to people if you need some help. People are in place to help you. If you need some help jumpstarting your your life, your health, your wellness, contact Tiara, contact Lisa, contact John. 
so that they can help you help yourself. So then you in turn can help the other people in your lives, your family and friends, and you will have a good quality of life so that you can live and love and laugh longer and healthier. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it for you to take care of your health, whether you're dealing with diabetes or not. You could be dealing with high blood pressure or something else. It is your health and it is worth it. You don't have to live ill. Thank you so much, Tiara and uh, John and Elisa so much for joining us today. You guys have been such a wealth of information. I mean, we didn't get to everything, but we sure got a lot of great information out. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now you know how to contact them. Now, would you please go over to uh, my Facebook page, Taylor Made Productions? Please like and share so that you can watch Kobe with COVID Monday through Saturday at two o'clock. And you can also get all of your COVID related updates. Also, you can still continue to post out this information so we can get the message to the masses. Also, on the YouTube page, the uh, Trey Taylor YouTube page, you can see all of the coping with COVID. And that is updated every single week with all of the shows that we've done. Please hit the subscribe button so that you can uh, keep up to date with everything going on. Hey, don't forget that uh, we're doing a giveaway beginning next week. September is my birth month, but we are giving you the prizes. You'll get a, a Coping with COVID mask, 10 disposable masks, a, a Sabrini butter, body butter sampler, European gift Center wax card, New York high style wax um, gift card, also a Jesus Always sampler and a, a sampler from a J. Anthony Brown. All of that and so much more comes up beginning next week, all September long. It's my birthday, but you are getting the prizes. Now, don't forget that coming up on Coping with COVID tomorrow, we're going to talk to Richland School District 1 Superintendent Dr. Craig Witherspoon and also Dr. Uh, Sheely, Dr. James and Sheely with Richland 2. If you've got questions that you need answered about back to school, I'm sure you want to know. Well, they will be here to answer those questions. And then on Friday, Faith Friday, syndicated radio personality Jamal Bates is going to join us and he's going to talk about trusting God during COVID. And then on Saturday, such an amazing love story between Deja and Jill, little John Bostic. They both lost love and then in the effort to help heal themselves and help the community, they found friendship, and then found love. Love and leadership with Jill and Deja Bostic. That's Saturday on Coping with COVID. As always, I'm going to leave you with my reading of Jesus Calling today. It is uh, Wednesday, August 26th, and Jesus says, trust me in the midst of a messy day. Your inner calm, your peace, your inner calm, your peace in my presence need not be shaken by what's going on around you. When you start to feel stressed, detach yourself from the disturbances around you. Instead of desperately striving to maintain order and control in your little world, relax and remember that circumstances cannot touch my peace. Seek my face and I will share my mind with you, opening your eyes to see things from my perspective. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. The peace I give is sufficient for you. That's your Jesus calling for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Trey Taylor. You take care, stay blessed, stay safe, and please wear your mask. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact
Access Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com. And Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc dot org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.